Hello, Siri. Can you tell me how many days it is until the 1st of the 1st, 2020? It's 77 days until then. What? 77 days until the first home loan deposit scheme starts? Oh my gosh, we are running out of time. If you are someone who doesn't think that they can afford their first home and they have to put up with a deposit that's of 10, 20%, then I've got news for you and we need to get you going quickly because we've only got 77 days or less than 100 days to get you going. So without further ado, let's run the opening credits so that we can get into giving you some information about you as a first home buyer and what you can do. It's the First Home Buyers Show, where first home buyers go to watch the world grow. And here's your host, Jane Slack smith So let's get going and let's talk about you and what we can do to help you get into your first home sooner. Now, I know that some of you may never have heard of me before. My name is Jane Slack smith and I started investing 20 years ago. And, you know, I'm so glad I did, but that doesn't mean that it's too late now. Now, over the last 15 years, I have been helping investors invest in properties. And, you know, one of the things I consistently see is people get to their 45 or 50 year olds and they think, oh my goodness, I've got my life slammed. You know, I've, I've kind of had the career, found my partner, got the kids, got the home. And now I'm looking at retirement and it doesn't look that nice. Now, I have these conversations every single day in my mortgage business, in my education business, on Facebook, chat them to anyone really. And what I find is people making risky decisions about that first investment that they're making and they don't need to be because I think that we can turn the traditional model on its head. Now, I recently had a little brush with mortality myself when I was diagnosed with a brain tumour, and it gave me an opportunity to lay in hospital and chat to some wonderful nurses in the last couple of months. I've been in recovery, everything is good, but it got me thinking, here are these amazing nurses who are sitting there going, we don't know how to invest or where to invest or where to buy. We're going to buy our first home at an off-the-plan unit or a brand new unit or a house and land package. And I was thinking, no, why are they doing this? Why aren't they making their first home, their first investment in their future? And then it got me thinking, and that's why we're here today. Because the thing is, a lot of first home buyers don't think they can afford to get into the market. And I have got such good news for you. A lot of first home buyers think that they don't want to live in the whoop whoops forever. And I've got good news for you too. And a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I know I'm running out of town time. I've given up completely and I've got great news for you. And it got me thinking, these nurses, one nurse in particular said, oh, gosh, you know, we, we found this group that were it's just so wonderful and they did everything for us. They found us the a brand new unit. They got it rented out for us. They got the mortgage for us. They did all the inspections for us as well. And I thought, hmm. And when they came to settle, they were a little bit surprised that the value of the unit was $80,000 less than what they had actually signed their settlement, their agreement on. And this is not uncommon. So I have made a commitment when I was laying there thinking, gosh, you know, in the next year, 10 years, 30 years, what do I want to do and achieve? I would like to assist first home buyers to become strategic investors as I do with all of my investors at the moment. So I have developed the five step first home financial freedom framework. And I want to talk to you about that today. And I want to talk to you about how you can put that in place for yourself. Or if you know someone who is a first home buyer or qualifies for a first home buyer grant, how they can use the grants, concessions and on the 1st of January 2020, this first home loan deposit scheme that the government's putting up. Because I think this is wonderful and it's an incredible opportunity to get in. Now, chatting to that nurse, it got me thinking, you know, people do go to these uh, property marketing groups and everything seems to be in one place. And they think because it's in one place, it's convenient and it's easy but often they're taken advantage of. So what I've done is I've pulled together a group of experts as well that I've personally used, my clients have used, or I have known and been connected with for years so that I can introduce them to you so that you know where to go and who to ask questions with. Now, I have got a uh, Facebook group that I have set up 
Everything is free. We, you know, if you decide to use any of our services, fantastic. But everyone is committed to helping the first home buyers to actually achieve their dreams. And I'm just going to put this up on the screen so you can actually look at where the first home buyers community is and go there and ask the questions. You know, go there and uh, connect with the experts and with other first home buyers. There's a lot of people in there. I've created units of education so you can go through and get an understanding of this five-step first home financial freedom framework and try saying that quickly after a glass of wine. But for me, it's about creating a community for you so you've got a safe place to ask these questions. Now, I know this is all free. And my mentor once told me that free advice was the most expensive advice. And you should always charge people or they won't value it. But you know what? I'm going to go against my mentor on this one because for me, I am so personally committed to assisting everyday Australians to get over their financial worries using residential property so they can get on with their life, live with full purpose and passion with what they want to do and live to their full potential. For me, this is really, really important. So that's why I've created this free first home buyer show. I've created this free group for you to go to. And, you know, this is where it's a safe space so that you can actually learn. So without further ado, let me talk to you about that five-step framework because I think this is going to give you a real inspiration and revelation on what you can do. And thank you so much um, And to uh, everyone who's there. I've got Nicholas saying, hi, Jane. Hey, good to hear you. I'm hoping everyone is actually uh, seeing the video. We have technical problems. I'm running this all by myself. So, you know, if things go wrong, send me a note and uh, I'll try to fix it up. But all your questions can also be answered within that first house buyers group. So go, go into Facebook, check it out. I'll put a link below so that you can uh, join. But for me, I really want to give you all the information that you can and introduce you to the experts who are trusted and known in their field and trusted so that you can get on with making the decision in getting into your first property. So let me show you the uh, framework that I have created. Now this framework I am really proud of and I'll tell you why. Um, it, it is one when, you know, I think things can be simple and I was an explosives engineer for 18 years and for me everything I did was about risk assessing. For the last eight years of that I was an explosives expert in the mining industry. All I did was assess risk every day and I took that risk assessment and I applied that to my own investing journey. I bought my first property in 2001 for $425,000. I only had $45,000. I used a 5% deposit and I put $25,000 into stamp duty to the Victorian government. I then borrowed $50,000, did a renovation, and nine months later, that property was worth $700,000. That was my first home. That became the foundation of everything. And I used equity from that to buy the next property and the next property. And that is what I want for first home buyers, the confidence and clarity of a step-by-step -step process so that you know what you can do to actually achieve that financial security for yourself with little money down because we're going to show you how to use the first home buyer's incentives concessions, stamp duty concessions, depending on the state or territory you're in, and that first home loan deposit scheme. Because I have a goal to have 100 people ready with their applications on the 1st of the 1st, 2020, so that we can absolutely slam it for you and get you into your first property strategically positioned so that you can come out a winner and create your financial future. Okay, so let's check out this stream. So, what I have here is the five-step first home financial freedom framework. And as I said, you know, for me, it's about looking at what is possible. So let's check out the beginning of this. And that is the see it part of this. And when we talk about see it, I'm talking about understanding not your next 10 or 15, 20, 30 year retirement plan. I'm talking about the next one year plan. What do you need to get yourself ready to start buying your first property. Now, that might be setting up your deposit, it might be getting yourself ready to understand what's necessary in some education, it might be about getting a new job even. So this is about your one year plan. What I want you to do is be able to visualize exactly in the next one year, preferably in the next three months, 
what you're going to do to get yourself into your first property. And then let's consider the three-year vision. Like I don't want you to think out for the next 100 years. Let's just keep this simple. If then in the next one year you can buy your first home, in the next set, live in that property for a year or six months, depending on which state or territory you're in, move out of that property, make that your investment property, and then get on with life. Go live where you want to live. Now, there's a really trendy term called a rent vesta. Now, what is a rent vesta? Jeez, I was a rent vesta back in the 2000s without even knowing it had a name. In actual fact, my parents at the age of 70 became rent vestas. They have never owned their own home. They still rent today, and it was one of the motivations that I had to get into property investing right in the beginning because I knew I was going to have to do something to assist them when they got older. Now, they were luckily left a legacy by my grandmother. They have an investment property. They don't have their first home. They live where they want to live in a property worth one and a half million, uh, overlooking the, the sea and with incredible views. And I think they rented at 470 bucks a week. You know, that's what rent investing is about. Investment property where you, you possibly don't want to live, but having a property where you live and you rent where you want to live. That's rent vesting. I did it for five years whilst I built my portfolio, and I have to tell you, it worked. So this is about seeing it. So visualize what you're going to do. So we're talking about understanding what you need to do to get yourself ready for this purchase. And a lot of this is mindset as well, which we'll go into when you jump into the group and the community, because we talk a lot about that. Then live in the property. Now, there is a secret sixth optional extra to my framework, which I'll introduce you to at some stage in the future, but it's how you can supersize this investment whilst you're living in there. And then think about the long term. We want to make sure that you can afford to keep this property and live your life once you get to move out and put that investment property down so that you can move on and enjoy life. So that is the see it component of our framework. Now let's move on to the next component, and this is setting it up. Now, this is so important, and I see 40, 50-year-olds getting this wrong all the time, the wrong loan, not being ready for settlement, not understanding how much money they need, buying a property, and then not being able to afford to keep it. So this is about being completely clear on what you need. Now, often what we need here is to start with our budget. Budgeting and money management are number one goals here. And that's why I have an expert within the community who's going to assist you and give you assistance and answer your questions on that as well. Because it's so important to have the right people on your side. Now, if you can't do this yourself, and I know when I started, I found this really difficult. I had an envelope system where I'd pull my money out, which is handy because I was working in the coal mines and they used to give you your money in the envelope, showing my age. Pull your money out and I put some money aside for you know, food, holidays, rent. Uh, I actually had to put some aside for dog vet bills because my dog kept getting ill or getting hit by cars. Um, you know, all the utilities, everything, you know, spending money. So I had it in envelopes, but you don't need to keep it in envelopes today. So we're going to introduce you to an entire system that is going to help you link your credit cards and your, your money and uh, be able to know what you're doing and how you are budgeting. Because what you need to know is how much of a deposit you need. Now, most people think that they need a 20% deposit. And on a $500,000 property, we're talking like a hundred grand, right? How long is it going to cost you or take you to save a hundred grand? Now, if you remember back, my very first property, I bought with a 5% deposit, a $425,000 property. Now, that $425,000, if I had waited until I had a 20% deposit, that would have been worth like $600,000, and then I would have been buying the equivalent of a property that at the time that I bought was probably worth $300,000. So buying with a smaller deposit can actually be a better idea in getting into the market sooner. So for me, I think this is so advantageous. Now, you may have read that the Sydney and Melbourne market are moving. Well, let me tell you, yes, they are. Macquarie Bank has just come out and said they believe that Sydney and Melbourne will do a 10% increase in values between now and the end of 2020. 
Now, on the average $800,000 property, that's an $80,000 increase. On a $500,000 property, $50,000 increase. This is what you can make between now and the end of 2020, according to Macquarie Bank. And I know personally, you know, one of my done for you students recently uh, secured a property. We helped them find the suburbs. They secured the property between the time they signed and the time they actually settled, six week period, the property had gone up $30,000. That was the equivalent of the stamp duty they paid. Money out of thin air. So the market is moving now. We have an incredible opportunity for you guys to jump in and take the advantage of the first home loan deposit scheme, which comes in the first of the first 2020. And what is that? Well, traditionally, if you have less than a 20% deposit, you need to pay lenders mortgage insurance, LMI. Now, LMI is insurance that protects the bank, but they make you pay that once off premium. Now, on a $500,000 property, that can be $15,000. And what the government and the opposition, when they were going for the uh, election promises as well, both promised was that by the 1st of the 1st, 2020, they would actually back the remaining 15% if you fronted up with a 5% deposit. Now, this means there's no LMI. So instead of putting that $15,000, $25,000 on top of your loan and have to pay that off, you don't have to. Now, 100,000 first home buyers were in Australia last year. The government is committing to assisting 10,000. I want to assist 100 in being application ready by the 1st of the 1st, 2020, and I hope you are one of them. Go ahead and join our Facebook group because I really want to be able to give you all the resources so that you are application ready. And that's part of set it. So understanding your budget, understanding how much of the deposit you need, understanding what you can borrow. Now, as a mortgage broker, I've talked to people over the last 15 years about what they can borrow. Now, at the moment, interest rates are insanely low and we know they're going lower. And there has been changes to the serviceability over the last four years of how much people can borrow. It used to be quite high, then it came down, now there's been some laxing. But here's the thing, you need to actually understand what your borrowing capacity is because that will translate to how much you can spend on the property. And that means that we know then where you can afford to buy to get your property to be in the best possible place to be able to be on that growth path. So understanding what you can afford is important. Now, recently I had one of um, an application that went into the lender and the lender came back and said, there's a $25 a week payment that's going out. There's a regular repayment. You haven't declared this as a credit card or a repayment um, on the um, P&L of the person. Please explain. So they go back to the person and say, what's this 25 bucks a week that you're spending? And where's it going? I said, that's my, that's my palm and my pint that I'm having with my partner every Friday. That is the degree of the forensic analysis that is going on at the moment with lenders. Like, yes, shock and awe. So you have to be really, really clean on where you're spending your money. Now, most banks require you to have a 5% genuine savings. But here's something that most people don't know. I know lenders that will allow you to actually use the rent that you're paying as genuine savings. Because after all, that's money that you could have been putting away if you weren't using it. And when you buy your own home, you won't be using that. So there is opportunity abound to be able to go to different lenders and have different borrowing capacities. So set it, let me just cover that off. Budget, understand how much you can afford to live off and how much you can afford to save. Once you know what you have to save, that's your deposit. Then we want to be having you mortgage ready so your borrowing capacity is understood. And then once you've done that, we get to move on to the next part of the framework. And that is source it. So this is all about where to buy. Now, I just want to check in and see if we've got any questions before I move on to source it because I know there's a lot of information here. So who have we got here? Hey, Sharon, how are you going? <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. Um, Nicholas has got a question. Can I use my first home buyer advantages on a new house? I plan on paying, buying interstate, meaning I won't be living in it. No, Nicholas, you can't. As a first home buyer, you're going to have to live in the property unless, and here's a secret that most people don't know, if you are in the Defence Force, they actually allow you to use the first home buyer's grant and concessions in the state that you have your electoral role in 
you don't need to live in it. So if you're in defence, give us a call, <laughs> get into the group, we will be chatting to you about that. Um, and oh, thanks Cam for letting me know nothing was happening, I think I had a tech problem. Hopefully it's all working now. Okay guys, oh and there's Scott, he's saying hi as well, I'm going to introduce you to Scott later. So guys, let's just talk now about the next part of the framework and this is Source It. Now this is my personal passion and this is actually why I started my mortgage company because I wanted to talk to people about where they were buying. Now, I told you I was an engineer, love Excel spreadsheets, and I thought if I'm going to waste $45,000 on property, because back then that's what I thought it was, I want to make sure that I have the best chance of making sure that this is going to be a decision I will never regret. So I wondered what I could do. And that's when I got busy. I got the 15,655 suburbs in Australia. I did what's called a regression analysis. I looked back over the last 20 years and thought, what is it that's about some of these suburbs that is going up in value that other suburbs aren't? And I found a few criteria. And then what I did was I thought, well, how can I minimise my risk even more? So if I buy in a suburb that has, for instance, over the traditional 30% renters in it, I know I have a rental-ready suburb. If I have a look at the vacancy rates, for instance, and see there's less than a 3% vacancy, I know that I have a property that is in demand, if I buy the typical property, and people are there's more people wanting to rent than there are landlords putting their rental properties in the market. They were just two of the five filters that I apply. Now, I've developed this a whole lot further in recent years. I have a location masterclass where I actually every month come up with a new suburb selector software that is back-ended by SQM research data and I run this for my mentoring students every month the over 8,500 major regional and capital cities in Australia and only 120 suburbs in Australia fall out. Luckily to say, there's one in every state and territory that um, are in the areas that I would consider to be ready for capital growth and are going to minimise my risk. So that's the degree that you can get to and here's something else that most people don't know. Census has free information about all the people where they were living on, you know, whatever the date was in 2016 when the last census was taken. Now, in five minutes, I can show you, and I will in future First Home Buyer shows, how you can use that data to actually get down to the street level to where the renters want to live. Now, imagine buying a property in a growth area with the ripple effect, so we make sure that there's an in-demand areas, we have infrastructure and population and income growth, all those good things as well. But then we minimise our risk and making sure there's renters there and making sure the vacancy rate's right. And we're making sure we can look in the streets that renters want to live. Imagine having that property. It's in demand. It's going up in value. It's a typical property. You live in it for six to 12 months. And then you put it aside. You move out. You become a rent investor. And that property sits there for the next 20 years, 30 years, creating your financial future. For me, that is what financial security is all about, and that's what I committed to achieving. So where you buy is critical, and I can't stress this enough. The source of is something so very, very close to my heart, and if you go to this page, Learn with Jane Slacksmith, you'll go down, you'll probably see a seven-minute video on Willert, which is a suburb. I did a quick review for one of the nurses that I was speaking to in the last couple of weeks whilst I was in hospital. She was going to buy in Willert. And I did a whole analysis on the suburb. This is how precision-based you can get with your source it. Very exciting. Now, you found the perfect property. You know you can afford it. You know you can make the repayments. We've also, in set it, made sure that once you move out, you can make the repayments. Then we move on to the next step in our five-step first home financial freedom framework. So that is slam it. This is so exciting. Now, this is where most people just let the process go. So they're like, oh my gosh, I've saved all that money. Oh, I found the property. I spent endless weekends doing inspections. And I'm going to show you how you don't have to do that either. 90% of what you do can be done online. But then we get to the stage of, I finally found the property and this really nice real estate agent who seems to be so sweet and welcoming on my side has given me all this information, has told me how much the property is worth, and I guess that's what I have to do. But I know I need to negotiate a little, I try to be not too sure what to do. And then, you know, 
they move on and they go, well, you know, the agent said there was nothing wrong with the property, so, you know, I didn't really do any inspections. And then I got to settlement and, oh, you know, there could have been some problems. Guys, this is the slammer. This is where you have to be super precise to get the property right. Now, I'm going to introduce you in our community, the first house buyer community, a, a keen negotiator who's had over 20 years training real estate agents how to exploit you, but also has all the tips and tricks in the negotiation. Now, Scott from Hello House is in there. Um, he is an incredible negotiator. I have seen him personally negotiate hundreds of thousands of dollars of asking prices for people and he is insanely qualified to assist you and I'm really excited to help you work with someone who understands the skills of negotiation. I don't negotiate very often. I'm sure you don't either. Traditionally, most people buy a home or a house every 10 years. We don't negotiate well. And if you think you are a good negotiator, next time you go and order a coffee and they say it's $4.50, say, I'll give you four bucks and see what they say. See if you can get them down. <laughs> I'm not that great at negotiation. If you're not great at negotiation, get a professional to help you or just learn how to do it from one of the professionals that we have here to help you. Get in there and have a chat to, to Scott from Hello House. The next thing is conveyancing. Now, most people move, miss out on this as well. And I'm so you know happy to introduce you to one of our experts in there as well. You know, they have, uh, and I've worked with them for years, they have the ability to have, when you have a good conveyancer, you know, often they'll look over the contracts for you, you know, maybe three, four, five contracts before you, to, before you even, you know, um, go ahead with a purchase just to make sure things are right. Now, I know the conveyancers that I've used in the past, they might change things like default rates, they might check things that you may not even be aware of. But having a conveyancer who gives you the heads up that, you know, five or six days before settlement, you need to have funds in an account ready to settle, that 5%. You know, instead of on the day of settlement, trying to leave work and getting a trust account, bank check into an account, which is insane, you need to work with professionals who A, look over your contract, keep you up to date the entire way through, and Law Lab, I'm so excited to say you have an incredible platform and amazing communicators with this, and are going to get you through to settlement without paying. It's exactly what you want. But there's another step in between, and that is the pest and building inspections. Now, often people, oh my gosh, complain when a five, six, seven hundred dollar pest and building inspection comes back with there's nothing wrong, and they feel that's a waste of money. But I've seen similar people decide not to go ahead with a pest and building inspections. And one of, one of the worst cases I've ever seen was in a property had a crack in the lounge room wall that appeared after they settled. Now, what was happening? The property was smelling of paint every time they did an inspection. And the owner was going in and spack filling and then painting this great big crack. Now, after settlement, when the crack appeared and the landlord, well, the seller was no longer there, what they found was the property was actually separating. And they went and got quotes. There was over $100,000 to repin the property back together. A good building inspector would have found that and would have alerted you to it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to walk away. I've seen people who have uh, found termite damage, not live termites, but evidence of past termite damage, and they've negotiated $10,000, $20,000 off the price of the property. Once again, clever negotiation skills. So pest and building inspections is an absolute must. I'm glad that I can introduce you to someone in the community who can give you some advice and thoughts on that as well. Ask the questions. Get the knowledge. Understand the process. This is the path I want to take you on. So once you have the property, you have slammed it. It is yours. Where do you go after that? Well, I'm not going to introduce you to my secret supersizer right just yet, but I'm going to take you to the fifth and final step, and that is stash it. Jeez, you know, get on with life. Get that property rented out. Have a great property manager. And we're going to introduce you to some good, really good property managers who understand how important it is to do inspections, be on top of rental reviews, making sure that you've got the property right for renting. There's some things that you just need to have in some areas. And this is part of the inspection that we do back in Sauset and making sure that you go when you're doing your inspections to go to a rental property in the suburb you're looking at as well and listen to what people are saying. You know, oh, it doesn't have bars on the windows. You know, um, when, uh, where is the local public transport? 
you know, what are the concerns? Maybe every house in the street is tagged. You know, you want to know what the crime rate is. You want to understand these things about the suburbs you're looking at, and a good property manager will assist you as well. So making sure that you can slam this property, have it the loan when we set it up, have the loan set up for you or when your bank or broker sets up the loan for you. So it is set up as an investment loan in the beginning. You're not going to fall into uh, having it set, set up as a, a home loan because it's not going to do you any good. You want to be setting up and setting your loans for the next three to five years planning in, in the future. Once you've done that, you can just move out of the property, do all the checks and balances with your lender that you need to, rent that property out, get on with life. And this is the important thing. Now, my 11-year-old son, every now and then when I complain, tells me to suck it up, sweetie. And I'm afraid for some of us, we're going to have to suck it up where we're going to have to live for the next 6 to 12 months as a first-home buyer because you may not be able to afford where you actually want to live. But picture this. If you can buy your first home now, secure it, stash it away, and get on with life, and watch it go up in, in equity. Now in Sydney and Melbourne, as I said, we've got Macquarie Bank talking about 10% growth in the next year alone. Going up by 50, 60, 70, 80, $100,000, that property in the next year alone, creating equity to allow you to, you know, maybe go traveling, pursue the job that you want to, not have to be in the dead end job that you think you have to be in. Maybe buy the next investment property, maybe buy one, two or three investment properties so that you can stash them away so that you can sell them at some stage and buy that dream home with cash. You know, it is opportunity so that you can actually do what you want and have the financial security that you want. And for me, that is the most important thing. So this is the entire, um, the entire framework. This is the framework that I want you to be able to see and understand as simple as this is that it can be followed for you, for your kids, <laughs> for your nieces, nephews, work colleagues. You know, it is very clear. And, you know, I want to make sure that you're introduced to experts and people who are going to give you the right advice so that you can make the decisions on where you buy, how you buy, and how you set it up. Slam it and stash it so you can move on with life. So we've got a few questions. Let me just check out some of the questions at the moment. So we've got um, Janine. Can my son use the scheme of as he is going in with his mum and dad? Ah, Janine. No, he can't. Oh, maybe that's a picture of your son. <laughs> Look, the first home buyer scheme, you know, there's rules and regulations. And if you actually type in the word remind below, I'll remind you when I go live with my next first home buyer show, but I'll also give you a guide of the Australian first home buyers grants and concessions for each individual state and territory. It's really important that you understand that every state and territory is very different, but every single one of them does say that you have to be buying the property for the first time by yourself. Now, what this can mean, Janine, is that bank and mum and dad can assist your son in buying his property and it has to be in his name though only. So this is some of the things that we're going to get into in the set it um, part of the framework but it's a good question. There could be a way around it. However, depending on the state, there may not be a lot of the concessions for him and the reason that I've included and called this the first house buyer is I'm really not interested in talking to people and buying units and because I know the money is in established properties and in houses and I really want to give people the best chance of success. Now I personally have had two units of my seven property portfolio and I've got to be honest, they haven't always worked out and I will share my stories on that over the coming first home buyer shows. But uh, what it does mean is that uh, you need to assess if is your son actually can get in concessions and if he can get concessions then it might be worth uh, buying by himself. If he can't, then buying with you may well be the way forward. And still, there's still opportunity to buy with a 5% deposit. It just means that you may not have lenders mortgage insurance um, uh, that exemptions through the first home loan deposit scheme. You will get them um, you will have to pay mortgage insurance, which is the one cost the banks let you put on top of the loan. So good things. Thank you for your question. Okay, so any other questions? Um, 
We've got remind, remind, remind. Oh, Nicholas is back again. Typically, is it possible to be rent vesting and using the first home loan advantages? Hey, Nicholas, really great question and thanks for asking this. Look, it is possible to use this, but it is a timing issue. You have to live, depending on the state, within the first 12 months of buying the property in the property. So technically, you could uh, rent vest for 11 months and on the 12th month move in the property and depending on the state or territory, you need to live there for 6 to 12 months, then move out and go rent vesting again. So it is a timing issue and something that's really important for you to know and understand. Uh, we've got lots of other questions. And just a reminder, as I said before, um, and I'll put this up here for you, join that Facebook community. I think it's really important that uh, we keep this conversation going and that's just go into Facebook and type first house buyer. As I said, it's all about houses, not about units, first house buyer. So let's check out that framework one more time because I think it's um, really important that we have a look at uh, what the uh, framework is so that we understand what is possible as well. So this is the see it, set it, source it, slam it, stash it framework. And as I said, I know from my mentor that free advice is dangerous. As I said, you know, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jane Slagsmith. I have been investing for over 20 years. I've been helping investors for over 15 years. I understand the worries that many people have when it comes to investing in property. I understand the concerns and the issues that um, people face. I understand when you think that you can't afford it or you worry that you won't be able to afford it when you move out or you think that you're going to end up in the whoop whoops. You know, there are amazing places in each state and great suburbs with great characteristics that we're going to teach you in the club, sorry, in the club, in the first house buyer group and community and in these first home buyer shows. So there's lots of opportunity there for you. I don't want you to be thinking that you're going to miss out because with the together with the grants, concessions and this first home loan deposit scheme and combine that with our five step for the first home financial freedom framework, you really are set for success. Now, I know that in talking to all the experts and property experts and talking to people making predictions about the market, that there is an extraordinary growth happening at the moment. And as I said, you know, I've had some of my done for you students, I've had some of my clients that have been securing properties and between the time of securing the property and actually getting to settlement, the property's grown in extraordinary value enough to cover their stamp duty. So now is the time for you to be thinking about this. If you do qualify for the first home loan deposit scheme, 77 days before you have to be application ready. So we are so keen to take you on this ride now so that you can actually be ready for that application, ready to buy, knowing where you're going to buy, having your set up, self set up, having your budget ready as well. So, you know, this is the time. There is extraordinary opportunity. We have the grants and concessions. We have the market moving and we now have the education to assist you on your way. So this is very exciting. I guess the only things that I need to uh, make sure that you know is that you should get into that group. If you found a nugget today, maybe a bit of gold, hashtag gold, tell me what you found, what you've learned, and I'm going to get you, I'll get you oh, a copy of my book. So the person who I choose has got the best gold that they have found in this presentation and type in gold, hashtag gold, tell me what has really resonated with you today and I'll go through and I'll choose the best in the next couple of minutes and uh, I will send you my book so that you are absolutely got everything that you need to assist you on this path. But, you know, I really just want to reiterate it's only five steps for you to achieve this financial freedom. I think first home buyers thinking about their first investment property as their first home is something that completely turns tradition on its head and it's something that is completely outside of the norm. I know no one else is talking about this, but I've had enough experience of talking to 45 to 50 year old people who have said, oh my gosh, I have to buy my first investment property. Or, you know, I got to 40 and realized I didn't have my retirement set. 
and I rushed into a risky decision and now I've got a property that's going backwards. And here's another thing, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people who've been uh, applying for my mentoring program in the last six months and I look at their portfolios and I say, how did you end up with this property? It's gone, hasn't gone up in value, it's all, always been hard to rent. You know, why is this in your portfolio eating up your borrowing capacity? And inevitably they say, well, it was our first home and we decided that it'd be really convenient and easy if we just kept it and made it our first investment property. It was in the wrong suburb, the wrong street, wasn't the typical property, no one rented it and it was always a ball and chain around their borrowing capacity. I do not want that for you. And you know, there's portfolio killers in a lot of people's portfolios. I see them all the time. If we can get in and secure you the first property with all the knowledge and the experts advice to be able to assist you on this journey, you know, I'm talking about you know, money budgeting advice, you know, people who can assist you in sourcing the property and education around location, talking about negotiation skills, talking about, you know, pest and building inspections, what you need to know, talking about conveyancing, talking about property managing, talking about valuers as well, because you're going to have to get that property valued before you move out of it so that you can set it up as an investment property at the right time. There's so many things you need to know, but here's the thing, it's all something that's known and teachable. So I'm going to continue teaching you here. Every single week I am going to interview a first home buyer. If you would like my one-on-one -on -one attention to your first home buying uh, situation so that I can assist you and you know, everyone else can uh, listen to your coaching session, um, please you know, put down guest below and uh, we will get in contact with you. And uh, because I would really love to, as I said, get 100 people application ready by the 1st of the 1st, 2020. And we're going to do all we can to give you all the knowledge and advice to be able to do that. And jump into that first house buyer Facebook group because there's going to be a wealth of education there for you as well. So final questions before we go. Let me just check them out. Um, What's Nicholas say? Hey, I'm in your location masterclass. Of course, I have somewhere else. Um, and waiting for your map so you can do your dot map. Oh, my goodness, Nicholas. I love the dot map exercise. You are going to find so much information. I've just recently completed it myself for all the different states. So uh, let me know how it's going for you. Um, oh, we've got a gold nugget here. What do we have? Leanne, thank you, Jane. Had no idea about the Defence Force Personnel Clause. You mentioned Pierce, love your stuff and would love your book. Well, Leanne, I love you too. So this is coming straight to you. PM me with your address and we'll get it to you. And good luck with buying with your son. And what have we got here? Nicholas, goal is financial freedom by 40. Love it. 30, 10 years, plenty of time. Got PR, so able to finally purchase a property and love your wisdom experience as I'm a carpenter. Oh, I love renovations and so happy to make it work for me. I'm not going to tell anyone else but you, Nicholas, but guess what? Renovations part of the super size it strategy. So I've got a lot of information for you too. Um, Janine, gold supporting my son to get application ready. He's 22 and wants to build his future wealth. You know what? I'm going to send you a book as well, Janine. Let's get him ready. I love the idea of passing this on to people. It's one of my commitments. I see the fact that I am just a small wheel in the cog of life where if I can affect change to someone's financial future, they get more time to sit down with their kids, more time to teach them financial wisdom, more time for those kids to then create a better future for themselves and for their family. This is about a legacy. This is intergenerational change that I'm committed to assisting people to doing. And I think family members that are helping their kids get on the right path are actually creating this legacy for years to come. So over to you, book as well, send me your address. And uh, Peter Lane, thanks Jane, this was so useful. I realised I really didn't know anything. Of course you do. We just are going to unravel it for you. And this is the thing. Everything here is free, nothing to sell. There's no courses or anything. We're here to support you on your journey. The First Home Buyer Show will be active every single Wednesday, 12.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Please be here. Put down Remind below and I'll make sure that we get you reminders out before each show and we'll get you a copy of that Australian First Home Buyer's Grants and Concession book as well. And... Uh, 
Uh, Denise says, thank you, he's such a wonderful man. Oh, thank you, says Leanne. Love you too. Nicholas wanted to put gold there. Nicholas, you've been so active and I reward action takers, so I'm going to send you a book as well. Yay. Send me your address. All right, guys. Well, that's it. So before I finish up, if you are on LinkedIn, if you're on Twitter, if you're on the podcast, if you're on Alexa, if you're on YouTube, if you are on Instagram, here is the speedy summary for you. Let me get it set up. Very exciting. So the speedy summary goes like this. You need to set it. This is about getting your one-year plan and your three-year vision in place understanding what you need to do in the next 12 months to secure that property, and then what you need to do to afford it going forward. And then we need to set it. We need to get your budget set up. Know what you can afford to live off. Know what you can save. Make sure we do all the credit checks and get your loan set up so it's ready for you to be able to take action when you're ready to source it. And that is knowing how much you can afford, where you can buy, and buying in the best possible place that's going to give you growth and equity so that you can move on and get on with life. Then we're going to slam it. This is all about negotiation. This is about doing pest and building inspections. This is about conveyances who are just going to get it done for you so you don't have to worry about it. This is slamming it so that you can move on to my secret sixth one, which is supersize it. And this is for those people who want to live in the property and potentially renovate it, maybe throw a granny flat on, maybe make it a multi-residence for when they move out. And then when they move out, they are going to just stash it away. Because they've sourced it the right way, they've put it in the right area so that they can actually have it making money for them. So that is the framework. I've revealed to you the whole six segments. But as I said, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Twitter, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Instagram, and if you're on the podcast, and if you're on Facebook, this is the speedy summary so that you can actually find everything that you need in one place. So for everyone that is here, I appreciate that you have uh, had the time to join us today. It's really exciting to uh, be able to share this with you on the first episode of the first home buy show and as I said time is a ticking so we need to get you onto it and we need to get you moving fast so that you are going to be able to make this your future so that you are going to be set for success and that's it for this week's first home buyer show and Jane will be back next time with more tips tricks resources and interviews see you then